what did I just step on? They go down. Boy, that's not a rock. And then somehow they had to open it. If you watch the cooking shows, what is the correct term for opening an oyster? Who knows it? Just yell it out. Shucking, absolutely. And you have a tool, a kitchen tool that you could buy at Bed Bath & Beyond called a shucker. Pretty cool. You need a shucker to shuck. And what it does is it opens, the, opens a clam, opens an oyster. Whoever stepped on that, they had no shucker. So they had to somehow uh, pry it open. And they'd say, boy, that's one of the ugliest things I've ever seen. I think I'll eat it. And they didn't even have Tabasco sauce. So they ate it. Oh, that ain't bad. So you know what they did? They went and started looking for more. And then you know what they did? They went to you, their friends. They said, come here, you've got to try this. And then someone along the way decided to put a little cocktail sauce or Tabasco sauce. I like a little cocktail sauce on mine. So I want to meet the first person who ever ate one. And you know what I want to do? I want to shake their hand. I don't know if we have hands in heaven or for spirits. I don't know, but I want to shake their hand. And I want to say thank you. Because of your taking a risk to eat something that looked disgusting, I get to enjoy oysters when I go and sit down at a nice restaurant. And I thank you for taking the risk, for taking the chance to eat something. So what I like to say is if you're going to be confirmed, you have to be an oyster person. You have to be someone who's willing to take the chance. You have to be someone who's willing to do something that stretches you. Oh, this is a little bit out of my comfort zone. That's what you need to be. You need to be an oyster person. And I couldn't be more serious. How is God calling you to greatness? How is God calling you to do unbelievable things? And you know, friends, to all of our confirmandi, stand up. I just want to see who you all are. Just stand up, all confirmandi. Awesome. That was your break. Now sit down. I don't know if you know this, but there was a young man. Most of you are 12, 13, or 14 years old. Am I pretty correct there? You're somewhere in there. I saw something. I was watching the inauguration of President Biden on Wednesday night, and they had, like, instead of balls, because they can't with all this stuff, they actually was a show. I don't know if any of you saw it, but they had a lot of entertainers and all that. It was, it was pretty cool. I was watching. And they had people reciting famous inaugural addresses of past presidents. So I was actually just working on my desk. I was having on Moore's background. And then someone came, they said they're going to recite President John F. Kennedy's inaugural speech, which is pretty famous. What can, don't ask what you, your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. You probably have all heard that. Well, there was a 13-year-old boy from New Hampshire named Braden Harrington. He's the one that was chosen to read the speech in front of the nation. And when I look at all of you, I see Braden Harrington. He was a 13-year-old kid, good-looking kid, just like you. You all took your masks off. You're all good-looking and handsome, all of you. I saw it. I don't lie. I'm in church. And I'm listening to Braden Harrington recite the words of John F. Kennedy. Well, what I didn't know about Braden Harrington he stutters. He has a stuttering issue. 
And I found out about it because they interviewed him later on on one of these shows. And I'm like, wow. And he got to know, his dad was on the interview with him, and he said, you know, when you live in New Hampshire, it's one of the first places where every presidential candidate goes to. Everyone goes to New Hampshire. New Hampshire's small. So his dad said, his dad said, I am an independent, and I always go and I meet every presidential candidate, then I make up my mind. And because New Hampshire's small, it's early on, everyone goes there. Well, they had heard that Joe Biden was a stutterer. And so Braden and his father went and... Because it's at the beginning of the campaign, this was over, well over a year and a half ago, and again, he said, you can see every candidate you want in New Hampshire. So they went up, and you can Google this. And his father said, this is my son, Braden, and he stutters. Joe Biden took him, put his arm around him, and he said, don't let that define you. And then he said, I want your phone number. And one of his aides took his phone and he says, I want to talk to you. And I want to show you what I've done to overcome. Because if you ever listen to Joe Biden talk, at times he still has a little bit of the stutter. Stuttering, there's nothing wrong with stuttering. There's absolutely nothing wrong with anyone who stutters. And to watch this young boy, 13 years old, just like you. And... Joe Biden actually called him, and he sat down with him, and he talked how he learned to overcome, how he would put slashes, how he would do things and not, not try to get worked up. And this young man is now on national TV reciting the words of President John F. Kennedy. And then when he was being interviewed, two different times he did stutter. And he was, you know how someone stutters. And he talked about how he was bullied. He talked about how he was picked on. Because some people saw that he stuttered and they thought he wasn't good enough. Stereotype, remember that big word, seven seconds? I want to now talk about bullying. And this Braden Harrington is actually become a little hero of mine because he was willing to step out. And he was starting to say, I'm not going to let bullies take over me anymore. I'm not going to do it. And Braden Harrington, with his stuttering and all, and I love what Joe Biden he said to him, he said, don't let that define you. You are bigger than that. And anyone who makes fun of you, they're missing out on who you are as a young man. You could, that's your homework. Google Braden Harrington and listen to the interview and you'll see him stuttering in front of the world, but he doesn't give up. See, do you know every one of us I'm, notice I'm putting this in quotation marks. Every one of us has our stuttering problem. And what I mean by that is our stuttering problem is different for each one of us. Every one of us has something we don't like. I wish this, I wish that, I wish this, I wish that. Do you know that when we don't love ourselves, we are insulting God? Who made us the way we are? God. Who made us the way we are? Every single part of our personhood, our body, every single one of us. God. Now I look out at all of you. You're pretty all, look like you're in shape, you're muscular, you're young, you're all athletic, you can all do things. And here I am as a fat middle-aged man. Boy, I wish I could go like you guys can. But you know what? That's okay. Because one, I'm never going to do it, and I'm okay with it. Because I love who I am. You know why? Because God created me. Because I look at my fingerprints, I touch my hair, I touch my belly button, and I know I am loved. And I don't care what anyone else thinks. If you don't like me because I'm fat, you're lost. 
you're a loss, and you're a loser. And you know what? I'm gonna get, I want to get to know everyone. I want to know, when I meet people, I love meeting people. And especially, I'm from the south side of Chicago. Many of you are. We're kind of all the Chicago area. Never make fun of someone because you're talking to someone's cousin. Right? That's how close-knit we are. And I love making the connections. I love making the connections because that shows how connected we are in Jesus Christ. And when you're going to be confirmed, you're going to be fully initiated into that. But let's talk about bullies. I was asked if I wanted any coffee. I said, this is my coffee. Probably not good for me, but this is what I like. Excuse me. Okay. When I was your age, I was thinking of going to high school. All of you will be entering a high school in about five months. And I hope you're excited and you're probably terrified, which is normal. You are so normal, you don't even know how normal you are. Now, I know how normal you are because I have spent 22 years of my priesthood working in high schools. I was a chaplain, a teacher, I'm a high school principal, and I was a high school president. And then I also had five years working at the college level at our Augustinian school. You may have heard of it, Villanova University outside of Philadelphia. And I lived in the dorm. I always say I lived with 150 of my favorite freshmen because I lived right in the dorm with the freshmen. So I know a thing or two about high school kids and about college kids. A thing or two. And I see thousands of kids on confirmation retreats. So I'm not bragging. I'm just giving you my credentials in case you say, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I don't know everything, but this I do know. Now, I'm going to tell you an absolutely true story of my sixth day of my high school career when I was your age and I was a freshman. I went to St. Rita High School on the south side of Chicago. 1,600 boys were in the school. And I was terrified. I was scared to death because I wanted to fit in. And what if, I, what if people don't like me? What if I get picked on? What if all these things went through my mind? But I got involved right away. I joined the marching band. Best decision I ever made. Went to band camp right be in, in like July. Got to meet all kinds of people. It was the best thing I ever did. So when you get to high school, get involved. I don't care what you get involved in. Whether it's music, clubs, sports, doesn't matter. Just get involved. Don't be a lump. A lump just sits there. <sighs> don't be a lump, okay? So at St. Rita, 800 boys ate lunch during fourth period, and 800 boys ate lunch during fifth period. There were four huge rooms. Each held 200 kids. And you ate all mixed up. You sat wherever you wanted. So there were freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors, all mixed up. No assigned seats. You just, But you know how it goes. You get your seat, and then you sit there forever. So I'm sitting at a table with about... about eight or nine other freshmen. This was the sixth day of my freshman career. This was in uh, August of 1979. Okay? The story I'm about to tell you, I am not any of the people in the story. I was the one sitting at the table watching. Okay? Just so you know that. So all of a sudden, we're there. Now, in each of the rooms, there were two pop machines. The cafeteria where you got your food was down the hall. So I'm sitting there with my friends, my new friends, getting to know friends. Sixth day of my high school career. And all of a sudden, everything quieted down. There was a little freshman, little guy, tiny peanut type guy, goes up to the pop machine put in, probably at those days, you'd probably put in 30 cents is what would get you a can of pop. 
He puts in his 30 cents. And a jerk sophomore comes, pushes him aside, presses the pop he wanted, took it, and laughed at the freshman, saying, thanks, freshman, you loser. And he walked away, and everyone was laughing. Except the freshman, because we're all sitting there saying, oh, my goodness, that could have been me. Seven and a half seconds later, the jerk sophomore is being dragged back to the pop machine. Not by a teacher, because there were no teachers in the room. He was being dragged back by a guy by the name of Eddie Duffy. Eddie Duffy weighed about 350 pounds, six foot three, defensive tackle, captain of the football team, huge shoulders, big head, no neck. Eddie Duffy. He's pulling this jerk sophomore back. He said, we don't do that at St. Rita. And the poor little freshman was like, the deer in the head, like, oh, just like this, oh. Probably trying to do everything in his power not to cry. You don't want to cry in the sixth day of your high school career in front of everyone. So Eddie Duffy says to the jerk, take out 30 cents, put it in the machine. He's like, oh, oh okay, okay. Puts in the 30 cents. Eddie says, hey, freshman, what pop you want? He's like, oh, no, serious, what pop do you want? So he presses, I think he pressed root beer. He gets the root beer out. Eddie takes the other pop out of the jerk sophomore's hands. He said to the freshman, look, today you get two cans of pop for the price of one. And he gave him the two cans of pop. And then he turned to the jerk. Now, you could hear a pin drop. We're all like, watch it. He said, you jerk sophomore, for the next five days, you will meet this young freshman at this pop machine, and you will say, sir, what pop would you like today? And you will put in 30 cents, and you will take out the can of pop, and you will put it into his hand and say, have a nice lunch. And then you will go have your lunch. And if you don't do that, you will deal with me. Now, 1979 was a different day. You could do things, and all the parents here, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you could have had Eddie Duffy get a slap to get around, and everyone would look the other way. That's just the way it was, 1979. It wasn't bad, it's just the way it was. And the jerk's home said, okay, 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 now get out of here. And he kind of walks back, and then everyone starts, ah, 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 the jerk sophomore. And the freshman is still there like this, oh, holding two cans of pop. Oh. Eddie puts his arm around him. Says, kid, don't worry. You're going to be fine. And if you do have a problem, you come see me. It's kind of like what Joe Biden did to Braden Harrington when he put his arm around him. Said, kid, you're going to be fine. But that little freshman had to believe. Braden Harrington had to believe. And I'm sitting there with all my freshmen. I'm saying, I had to believe. I had to believe that I was going to be okay. And I had to be who I was. Eddie Duffy could have been the biggest bully in the history of the school. And he wasn't. Captain of the football team, student council president, six foot three, 350 pounds, huge shoulders, big head, no neck. He could have been the biggest jerk. But instead of being a bully, he was a bully buster. Now, let's be honest with each other. We're in church. Don't lie. We've all been bullied at some point, and we've all bullied. If you have not bullied or if you haven't been bullied, I want to meet you because you are a very unique person. And the bullying could be big, it could be bad, and we've all done it and we've all experienced it. I'm here to tell you, if you're going to get confirmed, you need to be an Eddie Duffy. Because our world and our church needs Eddie Duffys. Now, I've never met Eddie Duffy. I've never been able to thank him. He changed my life. On the sixth day of my high school career, I knew I was going to be okay. 
if I just was who I was. Now, I was in the marching band. I was at every football game. So, I mean, I saw Eddie, saw him at the pep rally, so I certainly knew who he was. And you'd walk by, and he was just the type of kid, you know, he, he, he just, he loved everyone. They called him the mayor of 63rd Street, because St. Rita was on 63rd Street. Now, when the seniors finished their last exams, they had a week before graduation, and they had a senior trip to Florida. When you grow up on the south side of Chicago, 1979, 1980, People didn't go to oceans. People didn't go on the vacations we do today. I don't care how big you are. And by this time, I, I believe Eddie had a full ride to uh, Iowa to play football. I don't care how big you are. I don't care how strong you are. The ocean wins. And Eddie was in there, and a riptide came and pulled him down, and he drowned. May of 1980, 18 years old. I can remember being at the graduation because the marching band were always the ushers. Watching his mom and dad come up at the graduation mass to receive his diploma when they buried him the day before. Eddie Duffy changed my life. And I never met him personally. Fast forward 25 years, 1980, 2005. I am now the principal of St. Rita High School. And it was our 100th anniversary. We were founded in 1905. This was 2005. We're having a year-long celebration. And one of the things, one of our dads, who was good with videotaping things, he put together a, uh, a video that was going to be shown at our big gala down at, on Michigan Avenue at the Hilton. Well, it was shown, and what he did is he interviewed about 25 alums, all different ages, and it was shown during the dinner. And everyone got a copy of the DVD to take home. So I was one of the people he interviewed. And all he said to us was this, tell us one of your favorite St. Rita stories. I told the Eddie Duffy story. Well, one of the ladies at the gala was friends with Mrs. Kitty Duffy, Eddie's mom. She gave her the DVD, and on it she's watching me talk about her son, Eddie. She didn't know who I was. I didn't know who she was. I get a two-page tear-stained letter from Mrs. Kitty Duffy saying, Father Tom, you have no idea what you did for me. To know that 25 years after my son Eddie died, he's still making a difference. Well, I end up calling her, and I said, Mrs. Duffy, can we go to lunch? I want to meet you. So we went to lunch. And I said, tell me about Eddie. Because I want to tell you, I've been talking about him at every confirmation retreat I've been doing, for the last 10 years. And I, now that was 2005, what's today, 2021? I probably have told over a couple hundred thousand people the Eddie Duffy story because he changed my life. Well, Mrs. Duffy and I became friends. We'd go out to lunch every now and then. She eventually got sick, was dying. She said, Father Tom, would you please say my funeral mass and I want to be buried from the St. Rita Shrine, where Eddie was buried from. I said, Kitty, absolutely. And at her funeral mass, I told the story. Why am I telling you this story, Confirmandi, on your confirmation retreat? I'm telling you because I want you to be an Eddie Duffy. I want you to be a bully buster. I want you to stick up for everyone, including yourself. See, Eddie Duffy could have been the biggest bully, but instead, that's why everyone loved him. Because he was just a normal kid. Now, he was no saint walking around like this. He was a normal teenager. But he cared for every kid. He cared for people. And he didn't like it when people picked on other people. 
And all he did is step in. He didn't beat up that jerk sophomore, but he taught him a lesson. And he taught all of us a lesson. How can you be an Eddie Duffy? You know, we just finished the Christmas season. Did you ever see in the neighborhoods those big blow-up things on the lawns people put up? Maybe you had one. You know, the Santa Clauses, reindeer, snowmen. You know what I'm talking about, right? Those became popular about 15 years ago, before you guys were born. And I always thought they were pretty cool. But one day I was driving through a neighborhood, and it was during the day, and I said, oh, my goodness, there was a crazy man in here going around with a knife killing all these things. Well, then I realized, because somebody told me, because I didn't know, nobody was putting a knife in it. They were pulling the plug. I didn't realize that you got to pull the plug in, and then that's how it goes up. That's a bully. A bully is a bully because you give it power. You pull the plug on a bully, a bully, and I've known this being a principal for 12 years of an all-boys school, I dealt with bullies, and 98% of them were freshmen because freshmen think they have to fit in, and they think the way they fit in is to bully each other. So I would get them in my, my room, my office, and I always had a box of Kleenex because it usually took about less than two minutes that the bully would start crying. I say, okay, tell me about your life. What's going on with you? And most bullies were bullied or something's going on at home. Something's wrong. It is impossible for a bully to be happy. Oh, no, Father Tom, you don't know. No, 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 no. I know bullies, they're happy. No, they're not. They are good actors and actresses. They are, a bully is a scared little person in a big person's body. And they are terrified that you will find out how scared they are. And they should get an Academy Award for their performance. A bully, if you pull the plug on the bully, if you give bully power, you are building him or her up. The best thing you could do to a bully is this. Stand up to him or her. I'm going to challenge you to be bully busters. If you're going to be confirmed, you need to stand up for people. And you stand up for yourself. Because remember, a bully is nothing but a scared little person in a big person's body. Now, the good thing is, because I don't know any of you personally, you may be a bully. Well, guess what? I'm talking to you. You may have been a person who's been bullied. Guess what? I'm talking to you. Everything I'm saying today, I said, Lord, inspire me to say what I need to say to the young people here at St. Luke's. Now, I want to show you this little piece of paper. I put a couple of things on here. If you notice, I haven't been looking at it because I'm letting the Holy Spirit take me. And the different stories that come to my mind while I'm talking to you, it's the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit's saying, Father Tom, there's someone in one of the pews here and he knows you by name. They need to hear this. And I know, from what I know about eighth graders, every one of you needed to hear the bully story. Because at times you've been a bully, and at times you've been bullied. Now I'm giving you more homework. Homework, yes. I already gave you homework, right, to look up Braden Harrington. Guess what the next homework is? I want you to Google Eddie Duffy, St. Rita, Chicago. All of this will come up. The stories will come up. Look at his picture. You tell me if he has a neck. 350 pounds. Six foot three. Huge shoulders, big head, no neck. Eddie Duffy is a hero of mine. Braden Harrington is a hero of mine. And I've never met either of them. You know who else is a hero of mine? Jesus. Jesus was a bully buster. Jesus was someone who loved everyone. Did Jesus get in people's faces and tell them how bad they were? No. You know what he did? He encountered them. And he said, come to me. I got something I want to share with you. And that's everlasting life. You know, when you look at the crucifix, the beautiful crucifix that's here, do we celebrate death? 
No. That's the celebration that Jesus conquered sin and death. Because we know he rose. And you see at the foot of the cross is Mary, his mother, crying, and the beloved disciple. Moments before he died, moments before he died, he said, woman, behold your son, son, behold your mother. Was he only talking to John? No. You know who John represents? You and me. From the cross, Jesus gave us his mother Mary. She now becomes our mother. Mary is always with us. Jesus is always with us. The confirmation saint you're going to choose, a name, that saint is always with you. What are you going to do about it? How are you going to be the best you can be? And how are you never going to be second best? Again, look at your fingers. Look at them. Touch your hair. Touch the belly button. That's how much he loves you. And he knew that from the cross. That's how much Jesus loves us. Anyone here ever in your life played basketball, whether it was a pickup game, at home, in a gym, in school, in a team? Anyone ever played basketball? Ever? Even if it was for 10 seconds? All of you. Very good. I was a basketball player in 7th and 8th grade, I'll have you know. And I stunk. You know why I played? Because everyone else was playing. And people say, Father Tom, in your basketball career, did you ever score? I said, oh, of course I did. Would you like to hear my story? Because I am very proud. I've only scored one basket in my life in a game. Because I was the one that always sat on the bench. And when we were winning by 4,000 points, I was put in. And I was so excited. And I look at wow, I can't believe how clear this is. And I went and I shot the ball, threw the ball. Guess what? Nobody was more surprised than me that it went in. And half of the gym cheered. The only problem was it was the other team's half. My teams were like, you dummy, you threw it in the wrong basket. I scored two points for the other team. But I can still say I scored a basket. I just don't always tell the whole story. But I'm not lying. Did I score a basket? I certainly did. See, be who you are. Don't worry about anyone else. Now, there is a man, some of you may remember his name. He won six championships for the Chicago Bulls. Anyone know who I'm talking about? Who? Michael Jordan, right? You all know him? Okay, Michael Jordan. Do you know it's been said that Michael Jordan threw 1,000 free throws a day in practice? Michael Jordan? You're Michael Jordan. Why waste your time? Why would you waste your time throwing 1,000 free throws? Maybe he's Michael Jordan because he threw 1,000 free throws. See, friends, if you do the little things right, the big things fall into place. It's called foundational. It's called fundamentals. If any of you have ever been in an athletic, on an athletic team where you practice, or in music where you practice, or in theater where you practiced, or in a chess club where you practice, what you're doing is doing the fundamentals. And why do you do it? You do it so that when it comes to the point you have to perform, you can do it well. If you know anything about the game of basketball, you could win or lose a game by free throws. People will say, what is your free throw percentage? Maybe Michael Jordan was the best because he did the little things right. And he got cut from his high school basketball team. Think about that. Michael Jordan was restless. Restless? What does that mean? He was restless to be great. Restlessness is a theological term to greatness. We could be restless where we're just, uh, I don't want to do anything, I just sit there. Uh, 
That's restless. That's what I call negative restlessness. Positive restlessness is what all of you are doing here right now. You're all here on a Saturday morning. You're all listening, whether you're here or at home. And I can't see those of you at home, but I can tell you, everyone here in church, you guys are listening. I could tell. Remember, I'm a teacher. You're not sleeping. I don't see anyone on their phone. You're doing this, and I honor you for that. You're restless because you want to be great. You're here because you want to be great. That word comes from a prayer that a saint of the church, who actually President Biden uh, mentioned him in his inaugural address, St. Augustine. Mr. DeMarco told you, I am an Augustinian priest. I belong to the order of St. Augustine. St. Augustine is my spiritual father. So my phone was uh, going crazy after he mentioned St. Augustine. Did you hear? Did you hear he mentioned St. Augustine? Mentioned St. Augustine. So, St. Augustine, one of his most famous prayers. If you Google famous prayers of St. Augustine, this will come up. You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Did you hear me? You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Restlessness is what moves us forward. And who are we restless for? God. If you're preparing for confirmation, then you are preparing for God. You're restless. Michael Jordan was restless. Because if I'm just here, say, look how great I am, I'm just going to stay here, I'm stuck. But if I'm restless, it means I'll move forward. And if I'm moving forward, I will get to where I could be instead of where I am stuck. St. Augustine was restless. And he, you could look up his life. He lived from the years 354 to 430. He wanted nothing to do with religion. He said, that's for old women like my mother, because he was so smart. If he took the ACT exam, if they had them back then, you know, what's the highest you get on ACT? Anyone know? 36. He would have gotten a 37. That's how smart he was. You know, do you mind if I brag for a moment on my ACT? I got a 36. Are you duly impressed? You should be. I am very proud of my 36. I took the ACT twice. I added up the numbers, and I got a 36. I'm really excited about it, really excited about my 36. That's how smart Augustine was. Make a very long story short, he tried everything the world said would make him happy. Power, lived with a woman that wasn't his wife. They had a baby outside of wedlock. You name it, he did it. He was a bully. You name it, he did it. He was miserable. Until he met some people that helped him and introduced him to the Bible. And one day he opens up the Bible, puts his finger down randomly to Paul's letter to the Romans where it says, not in drunkenness, not in sexual excess, not in wild living will you find happiness, but only when you put on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It was at that moment that Augustine said yes to Jesus. And his restlessness moved from a negative restlessness to a positive restlessness that would move him forward to greatness. Michael Jordan isn't even Catholic, but boy, is he Augustinian, because he gets it. Be great, be wonderful, keep moving forward. You are called to be restless through confirmation. You guys are 13, 14 years old, I know that. My guess is some of you have tried cigarettes, some of you have vaped, some of you have drank. You say, how, what, 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 how, how do you know some of this? Well, because I know. I'm here to tell you this. You have to make choices. Remember at the beginning we talked about the stereotype, seven seconds? You've got to make a choice. Do you want to drink? Vape, and vaping scares the heck out of me. You know what I'm going to say scares the hell out of me? And I know I'm in church, I said that. It scares the hell out of me. Because the scientists haven't figured out what vaping does to us yet. How many of you know a firefighter? Probably most of you. Would a firefighter ever go into a building without a mask on and oxygen? Of course not. They said, what are you, stupid? When you smoke or vape, you're putting smoke into your body in little pieces. Now imagine doing that for years. It's like going into a burning building every day. What about alcohol? 
you guys are 13 or 14. Your, your inner organs are not formed yet. Well, my mom and dad can drink. Yes, they can, because the body, the organs start, stop, are fully developed by 22, 23. Yeah, your parents, their organs are fully developed, and you can have a certain amount of alcohol, and the liver can take it, and there's no problem. It's when you overdo it. But if you're not having a developed organ yet, and you're putting all this into your body, guess what? You are harming your body, and you only have one liver. You only have one pancreas. You only have one set of lungs. And so if you're putting all this stuff in, what are you doing? Now, if you don't believe, oh, that Father Tom, he's just saying it. He's an old priest. He's just got to say that. You know, that they pay him to say that. Nobody's paying me to say anything. I'm telling you this because I love you because you are my little brothers and sisters. And I'm going to care about you enough to tell you the truth. You put that stuff into your body, you are harming the creation that God gave you, your body. And it will affect you. If you don't believe me and you think you know it all and you're smart, I'm dumb, prove me wrong. When you go home today, Take out the hose, put it into all of your car's gas tanks, and fill up your car gas tanks with water. Okay? Well, then call the junkyard because you just ruined your cars. And then if you go say, well, Father Tom told me that I'm smart and I should fill up the cars with water. And then I'm going to get a phone call from your mother or father, say from your mother, say, why did you tell my kid to fill the cars? All our cars are ruined. I will say, madam, you gave birth to an idiot. I cannot help that you gave birth to an idiot. If you put alcohol, drugs, cigarettes, vaping into a machine, because our bodies are highly functioning machines created in the image and likeness of God. If you put things into this machine that don't belong there, it is no different than putting water into the gas tank. So if you're so smart that you can do all these things and it won't affect you, then go fill the cars up with water. When your mother calls me, I'll say, Madam, you gave birth to an idiot. See what I'm getting at? How about sex? Sex is one of the greatest gifts we've ever been given from God. We all know how babies are made. I didn't make it up. Guess who did? Jesus did. God did. I didn't design it. They did. If you misuse it, it's like using China at a picnic. It's not appropriate. And if someone says, oh, if you love me, you'll do this, nobody who loves you would tell you to do anything that you're not comfortable with. Use your gift wisely. Guys use girls, and girls use guys, just so you know that. So, you see what I'm getting at here? You have to make choices, friends. You have to be restless. What's going to make you great? And doing bad things, doing the things that don't help you is not going to make you great. It's only going to cause you harm, and you will be miserable, and then you will make everyone else miserable. And if you don't think I know what I'm talking about, go home and fill all your cars up with water. See, you don't get that? One of my last stories i got to tell you. And it's funny, I use a lot of stories of sports, even though I'm no athletic type person. But sports speak to us. Sports speak to us when you play. I'm a big, did you ever play Monopoly? There's this great new card game out called Monopoly Deal. I love it. Go get it. You'll love it. It's only 15, 20 minutes a game. So I'm competitive that way. I want to tell you a story about... Who do I want to tell you a story about? I actually forgot it. Now I got so excited about Monopoly Deal. Oh, okay. I told you I worked at Villanova University, the greatest university in the world. I just want to see if you all agree with me. If you agree that there is no better school in the world than Villanova University, the great Augustinian school outside of Philadelphia named after St. Thomas of Villanova, if you think Villanova is the greatest and there's no other greater school, sit. Great, thank you. Unanimous again. It's amazing. No matter where I go, I get unanimous answers that you all think Villanova is great. I worked there for five years. I lived in the dorm with freshmen. It was awesome. I was there as a student. I graduated from there in 1985 when we won our first NCAA championship. And I was working there for the second one. The third one I watched in Rome. The second one I was actually in Houston at the game. We were playing uh, North Carolina. We blew a nine-point lead in the last two minutes of the game. 
If you know anything about athletics, it's called momentum. We blew it. The North Carolina people are going crazy. And we're like, oh my goodness, we're going to lose. With a few seconds, 4.7 seconds to be exact, North Carolina, one of their star players, throws an off-balance three-shotter, boom, right into the basket, tied the game. 4.7 seconds left. We're going to lose this game. Because if we go into overtime, we lost all momentum. We blew a nine-point lead. So, the ball comes in, 4.7 seconds. Ryan Archidiakono, anyone ever hear of him? Plays for the Chicago Bulls. Ryan was a four-year starter, four-year captain, one of the nicest kids you want to meet. What I loved is at Mass, Sunday Mass, every Sunday at the church. Everyone knows they're going to throw the ball to Ryan Archidiakno. This is when, since Ryan was six years old playing on his play school uh, thing in his living room. You know, we all did it. Yeah, last ball, you know, World Series, right? Seventh game, bottom of the ninth, three outs or two outs, bases loaded, and you're up. And you're up there, and you're like, well, boom, and name your name, wins the game, wins the World Series. Ryan has been practicing for this moment since he was a kid. So the ball comes in, they throw it over to Ryan. Everyone knows Ryan's going to get the ball on North Carolina. There's this kid, a little chunky kid named Chris Jenkins, a junior. He's there. He yells out, Archie, because everyone called Ryan Archie Diakno Archie. Archie, I'm open. And the whole world is shocked that Ryan Archie Diakno that should take the shot, and he would probably get it, throws the ball to Chris Jenkins, who was all by himself, shoots the ball, swoosh, three points, Villanova wins, confetti coming down. I'm surprised I didn't fall off the chair because we were all standing on our chairs. I was in the 16th row. It was one of the most exciting moments of my life. Ryan should have taken the shot. But Ryan understood restlessness. Ryan understood, is more important me taking the shot or giving it to one of my teammates that I trust who's open? The junior chunky kid should not have thrown the, the ball, but he did. Ryan didn't care because that was his teammate. Guess what? I need you to be Ryan Archidiakono. You need to know when to pass the ball and when to shoot. Sports Illustrated always does a whole magazine on the NCAA the next week. The following week, there were letters to the editor. There was a man from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin that wrote in. He says, I have three young sons. I would be so honored and happy and proud of my sons if they were like Chris Jenkins, who took the shot. But he said, I'd be more proud if they were like Ryan Archidiakono, who passed the ball. See, friends, you're going to be confirmed. You, know, you need to know when to take the shot and when to pass the ball. And as Confirmandi, we're all in this together. We're all in this together. What choices are you making? Look at where we started. Remember when I came out and I insulted all of you? Seven seconds it takes. Seven seconds. Don't be a mushy green vegetable. Don't be a pea brain. But seven seconds. It's wrong, sinful, we do it. Then who else are we talking about? The oyster man. Remember the oyster man or woman? Take the chance. Who else do we talk about? Eddie Duffy. Can we talk about him? That's your homework. How about Braden Harrington? The little guy your age who stuttered. That's your homework, right? Braden Harrington, Eddie Duffy. Talked about St. Augustine, about restlessness, always striving to be better. Talked about living out our faith. Remember Pentecost? Those people in that locked room were terrified. Jesus breathed on them, gave them the Holy Spirit. They went out, and you and I are sitting here because they went out. And they were the ones who spread the faith throughout the world. And almost all of them were put to death as martyrs. 
They said, that's okay. You can kill my body, but you'll never kill my spirit. We need you to do the same thing. And then to be a bully buster. What was the, the jerk sophomore's name? I didn't tell you because I don't know. I could care less. He's a jerk. But boy, I'll never forget Eddie Duffy. And then Archie. That's your third piece of homework. You simply Google Villanova shot. And it's 4.7 seconds. And I want you to watch it. 4.7 seconds. And you put yourself in that position. He passed the ball. Know when you need to shoot and know when you need to pass. So friends, and I do call you friends because you are my little brothers and sisters in faith. I am so happy that we had this time together. I am so happy. You guys were awesome. See, I do a lot of this, but during this pandemic, I've had to do it like this, or I've been doing them on Zoom. And to see that you've been paying attention is awesome. That tells me a lot about who you are. And you are wonderfully made, created in the image and likeness of God. Everyone look at your hands. Everyone. I want them high so I could see them. That way I know you're looking at them. You are so unique, even the governments of the world say that nobody has the fingerprints you do. Touch your hair. God has every single hair on your head counted. Touch your belly button. That's where it all began. Remember, you're having a bad day? Remember, don't do it in public. They'll think you're crazy. Okay? Folks, we did it. We had our, our retreat. If we were post-COVID, we would spread it out. I'd have a couple of worksheets, which now you don't have to do. We'd get in a little, maybe a small group. We'd have a break. Okay, we didn't do a break. So, so, but everything I wanted to get in, I think for the most part, I did. Now, because you have been so good, I have a gift for you and a challenge. The challenge is to be the best you can be. The challenge is to use the gifts and talents that God gave you to be awesome and to be wonderful and to be great. And that's what confirmation will give you the courage and impetus to do when you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Look at what the disciples did. They were terrified behind a locked door. They went out, and all of them made an unbelievable gift to the world. And you and I are sitting here because of them. And then... That's my challenge, to be the best you can be and the choices you make. Seven seconds, don't be, a, don't be a, a loser. Get to know people, make good choices, don't be a bully, be a bully buster, and be restless. That's my goal for you is to be restless. To never be satisfied with where you are. If you're restless, it'll get you to where you could be. If you're restless, You'll keep moving. Even though you might take a step back, you'll keep moving, and you'll keep moving, and you'll keep moving. That's what I need you to do. So the gift that I have for you is maybe you've noticed something that I wear. What's your name? Jimmy, can you be the eyes for everyone and everyone at home? What does that say? With? Restless with a question mark. Thank you, Jimmy. Restless with a question mark. I'm going to give each one of you one of these bands. And I want you to either wear it or put it where you will see it every day and ask yourself, am I being restless? Am I moving to greatness? Am I being the best that I can be? So this is a prayer tool. Okay? So I hope you're going to come up and take one. And actually, I have enough if you want to take more than one. Maybe you want the different colors. Maybe you want to give it to someone. And to everyone at home, we're going to leave some with the teachers here, and they'll get them to you somehow. Okay? So, and then on the other side is my website. 
So at some point when you're doing your homework, because what is it? You're looking up Eddie Duffy. You're looking up Braden Harrington. And you're looking up the Villanova shot, 4.7 seconds. And if you want, you can go to my website too, okay? So what I'm going to do is I have a whole bag here of these because we got to do this kind of, you know, and I just took a bunch of different colors. And when I got out of the car, I said, hey, Mr. Uh, Mr. DeMarco, what's your school color? I had no idea. For those who go to St. Luke, your school color is blue and yellow. I had no idea. But so we got some of these here. And we're just going to put them out. There's different colors. Help yourself. And what you're going to do is you are going to walk up here. And parents, you're welcome to come too. We're going to kind of do it socially distance wise but you can come up grab one or if you want more than one I got a whole bag here okay I got plenty for everyone and I want you to take it home that's the story and because I love you I'm gonna put my mask on so wow 11 o'clock on the dot actually a little early because my watch is fast Look at 10.59, I like that. You guys have been awesome. You've been awesome. You've been awesome. And it's been a pleasure to be with you. I hope our paths will meet at some point. You'll say, hey, you were the priest on the retreat. I'll say, hey, you were a confirmandi on the retreat. Then we get to know each other, okay? So, let us stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I encourage you to be your best, do your best, enter the restlessness. So what we're going to do is can we do it just by row, and we have to do it socially distant. Everyone just doesn't run up. Come up here and then return back by the side aisles. And do we need any announcements from our teachers? the side okay god bless you thank you come on up let me put my mask on you're very welcome it's a pleasure to be with you okay okay then by the sides guys very good you're welcome hey father red (laughs) 